What is up, everybody? It is JT Sports. I am back to you guys with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast. And on this episode, I'm going to be giving you guys my state of the franchise for the Indianapolis Colts, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, if this is your first time listening to the JT Sports Podcast, welcome. I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure that you go ahead and follow me on all of my social media platforms. You can follow me on Instagram at JT Sports underscore. My Twitter is JT Sports underscore underscore. And lastly, make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is JT Sports, if you haven't already. The Atlanta Falcons in their first season under head coach Arthur Smith went 7 and 10. Now, if I was making a list of the most surprising teams in the NFL from this season, the Atlanta Falcons most definitely would be included on that list. Now, I know that 7-10 and 10 is not going to be impressive to a lot of you guys out there, but you have to take it into context. If we were to go back in time to one week before the start of the regular season, and you were to come up to me, from the future and you tell me that the Atlanta Falcons are going to win seven games I would have laughed at you and I probably would have told you to bet on it because I would have been feeling pretty confident at the time that the Falcons wouldn't win seven games and I didn't even think that the Falcons were going to be able to win more than five games this season so the fact that they won seven games in their first year under head coach Arthur Smith is a huge accomplishment now the Falcons didn't really fare all that well against some of the best teams in the league but when they play some of the average or below average teams this season, they were pretty good. So the Falcons, you look at the state of their franchise, they definitely have some positives that they can take away from this season other than just the record. Like you look at rookie tight end Kyle Pitts, you can already consider him a top five tight end in the league. And this is only him coming off his rookie season. Like tight end is not one of those positions that you can just easily come out of college and have success in the NFL right away. Like, there is a transition period for young tight ends in the league. Normally, we don't see young tight ends break out into about their second or third season in the league, okay? It's not like wide receiver where you just go from college, you get drafted into the league, and you're having a Jamar Chase kind of season as a rookie, That's common. As a tight end, what Kyle Pitts did this past season was not common because when you're playing that tight end position, going from college to the NFL, there are a lot of young tight ends that struggle early because you got to learn not only the route tree, but you also have to learn the blocking scheme, you know, pass blocking, run blocking. Like there are a lot of nuances to playing the tight end position. And when you get into the NFL, especially when you look at what Atlanta asked Kyle Pitts to do with the ways that they utilized him, lining him up all over the field, like he did a phenomenal job this year. Like the transition for a tight end to college to the NFL can be kind of rough. Now, you look at on the defensive end of the football, oh my goodness, A.J. Terrell had a hell of a year, hell of a year, and there are a lot of Falcons fans who are upset because he didn't make the all-pro team, which is understandable, like you probably could make the argument that A.J. Terrell deserved some pro, some pro Bowl votes, some all-pro votes, I'm not going to say that I would have had him on my all-pro team, but you definitely can say that he was a top 10 cornerback this season. So you have some two good cornerstones to build around for your franchise moving forward. You got A.J. Terrell on the defensive end, and you got Kyle Pitts on the offensive side of football. But what about the future of wide receiver Calvin Ridley? Now, Calvin Ridley didn't play that much this year he decided to step away from the game to focus on his mental health which i have no problem with it you get what i'm saying however what's going to happen with calvin ridley is he going to get traded out of atlanta 
Can Atlanta find a way to resatisfy him and keep him settled? Because being honest with you, I don't really think that the Atlanta Falcons are in a great spot, at least from a offensive standpoint. Because if you if you lose Calvin Ridley, who else do you have at wide receiver? Pretty much nobody. I mean, Russell Gage is slated to be a free agent. Tajay Sharp is slated to be a free agent. So the only people you really still have, if you were to take away Calvin Ridley and the pending wide receivers that they have who are slated to be free agency, who are slated to become free agents, you really only have Zacchaeus and you have Christian Blake, really. So Atlanta has to bring in more talent and more depth in the offseason at the wide receiver position. And if you trade Calvin Ridley, of course, they're going to try to make sure that they get at least a first round pick out of it. And they're probably going to end up trying to improve that wide receiver position, rather it be free agency or via the draft. Then defensively, you probably need help everywhere when it comes to your pass rush, secondary safety corner like you need help at almost every position available on the defensive end so for Atlanta yes they went seven and ten and seven and ten is a very good start to any first year's head coach career okay but at the same time I want to see how much this roster is going to improve this offseason because the Atlanta Falcons aren't in a situation where they have a lot of cap space to work with. As a matter of fact, they have negative cap space, so they're going to have to clear some of that out. Then what's going to happen with Matt Ryan? You know, like what's the future of Matt Ryan? Now, Matt Ryan, I don't feel like he was awful this year but he definitely wasn't great he definitely had one of his worst seasons in recent history so what's next for him do you keep him do you still feel like you can win with Matt Ryan or do you try to trade him to a team that needs a quarterback that's in the position to win now like a Denver or maybe Pittsburgh so what's Matt Ryan's future going to be in Atlanta okay And even if you do trade Matt Ryan, who's going to be his potential successor? Because his potential successor definitely isn't on the roster right now. It's not Josh Rosen. It's not Felipe Frank. So who is it? So you're most likely going to end up having to draft a quarterback because it really wouldn't make a lot of sense for the Falcons to try to trade for a quarterback, especially when you look at the kind of cap constraints that they're working with this offseason. So if they trade Matt Ryan, you're pretty much going to end up being put in a situation where you're going to have a below average bridge quarterback or you're going to have a very young rookie quarterback starting for you next season if you opt to get rid of Matt Ryan. So what's the future going to be for Matt Ryan with the Atlanta Falcons? And you can't really put all of the blame for Matt Ryan's season, well, disappointing season on him because he didn't really have the best supporting cast. Like really the only reliable option he had to throw to was Kyle Pitts without Calvin Ridley, you didn't really have that true number one wide receiver on the outside. So for Matt Ryan, there really was only so much he could do. And you got to remember that when you're a quarterback at the stage of his career, like Matt Ryan is, you're not in a position where you should be carrying your team week in and week out. The running game has to be there. You got to have weapons. There was a reason why Tom Brady left New England and joined Tampa Bay. It was because he realized at this stage of his career, he's not good enough to carry a team that kind of is lacking in talent which is why when you have a veteran quarterback that's in the ending stages of his career it's very important that you make sure that you have the best team built around him as possible so for Atlanta if you're going to bring Matt Ryan back for another year or you plan on letting Matt Ryan retire as a Falcon the Falcons have to make sure that they put a lot more emphasis on improving the whole entire supporting cast for Matt Ryan because essentially you look at Matt Ryan and you keep it Matt Ryan still shows that hey man like we can still win with this guy so for Matt Ryan at this point in his career I still believe that he's good enough to to win a playoff game with however if he has the right pieces around him or the necessary talent around him 
And that's what Atlanta has to do. And with the way their salary cap situation is looking right now, they're probably going to have to renegotiate. They're going to have to let a couple of guys walk away who they might want to bring back. But overall, the state of the franchise for Atlanta I'm still in wait and see mode. I'm not going to say that this franchise is moving in the right direction, but however, I really do have a lot of optimism based off what they did this past season, year one under Arthur Smith going seven and 10, but I'm still in wait and see mode because there are a lot of positions that needs to be addressed for the Atlanta Falcons. But this definitely could be a team that next season in 2022, when the 2022 regular season kicks off, they could be a team that ends up going from near the bottom of their division into being a playoff caliber football team because this team won seven games despite not being one of the better teams in the NFL despite not even having an average roster at best like the Atlanta Falcons probably were below average if we were to rank every team based off talent the Atlanta Falcons probably would be near the bottom of the barrel so seven wins when you look at the talent that Atlanta had going into this year is a huge accomplishment and you probably could say that the Falcons overachieved this year so stay the franchise for the Atlanta Falcons more of a wait and see approach for me because there are a lot of huge question marks that have to be decided so you guys let me know how you guys are feeling about the state of the franchise for the Atlanta Falcons down in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube make sure that you check out the JT Sports podcast every video that is uploaded on the channel is available in audio format on every single podcasting platform Continuing the state of the franchise series, we have to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you guys know how hard it is for me to talk about Jacksonville because I'm from the city of Jacksonville. Okay, I've spent the majority of my life living in Jacksonville. So I pay close attention to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And the Jacksonville Jaguars really let me down this season. And you're probably going to ask, JT, how did the Jacksonville Jaguars let you down this year? Like, you actually had expectations for the Jaguars this season or this past season? Yes, I did. So for those of you guys who are OG listeners of the podcast or OG subscribers to the channel, you guys may remember... In the off season, when I was doing my record predictions in early August, I had the Jacksonville Jaguars winning at least six games. And we all know that the Jacksonville Jaguars came nowhere close to winning six games. They were the worst team in the NFL. They once again have the number one overall pick for a second consecutive year. So, like, you bring in Doug Peterson. And... Was Doug Peterson even the Jaguars' preferred choice? Because like a week ago, it was a report that popped up on my phone that Byron Leftwich was expected to become the next head coach and they were about to finalize the deal. And I was like, okay, Byron Leftwich going to Jacksonville, great fit, I like the move. But then... Reports come out that the Jaguars and Byron Leftwich are not official and that the Jacksonville Jaguars are still going over potential candidates before they make their final decision. And then a couple of days later, report comes out that Byron Leftwich has taken his name out of consideration for the Jaguars job. So it's just a bunch of this. It's just a bunch of stuff going on with the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot of dysfunctionality. Like, Trent Blake is still the general manager in Jacksonville. Now, I like Sean Khan. But the problem with Sean Khan is that he's too patient. Now, I was surprised that Urban Meyer got up on out of there as quick as he did. But Sean Khan is a really patient owner. And, you know... To be successful in business, you got to have patience. But at the same time, you can't hold on to something too long. Like, what's the point of having spoiled milk in your refrigerator if it's spoiled? You get what I'm saying? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. So if you know that the milk is undrinkable, why do you still have it in your refrigerator? If you know that Trent Blake isn't a great general manager, why is he still the GM for Jacksonville? And what's even more crazy is that 
at some point this season, you remember the Jacksonville Jaguars used a first round pick on CJ Henderson? He's no longer with the team. He's playing for the Carolina Panthers. And that brings up a broader complaint that I have about this franchise for Jacksonville is that they don't hold on to draft picks. Like their first round draft picks don't really stay on the roster for no longer than what? Three seasons? Like how long did Jalen Ramsey stay in Jacksonville? I mean, he didn't even stay in Jacksonville for another contract. He got traded to the Rams. Leonard Fournette. Traded. He was a former first round pick. Dante Fowler, another former first round pick by Jacksonville. Traded. Like, we go through the last couple of first round picks for Jacksonville. Not too many of them stayed for another contract. A lot of them got traded and a lot of them went separate ways. So, for Jacksonville, you look at Doug Peterson, like, can he stabilize this franchise? Doug Peterson is a Super Bowl winning coach. He won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles against the New England Patriots. But there are a lot of people who tend to discredit that Super Bowl by Doug Peterson and Philadelphia because they say, well, Doug Peterson didn't really do that much to win the Super Bowl that year. That was because of Frank Wright, who was his offensive coordinator at the time. And I understand that, but at the same time, you have to give him credit for assembling the staff. Okay, and he did play a pretty big role in the game planning. Like, I find it hard to believe that the Eagles won won the Super Bowl with a head coach that didn't do anything to to contribute to it. Like, it doesn't really make a lot of sense how we try to discredit people because they had a certain person as an offensive coordinator or whatnot. Like, I think that Doug Peterson is a pretty solid coach and. If you're Jacksonville, this is probably what you need. You need a NFL head coach who isn't learning on the job. You need somebody who has already had proven success in the NFL, which is something that Doug Peterson has had also. So he has experience. He's not learning on the job. And he has the proven track record of success. So now, can you bring some talent in? which you should be able to because you are going to have a lot of cast space going in. As a matter of fact, you're going to be one of the few teams that has the most cast space going in to this offseason, going in into free agency. And you should be using that money really wisely because, I mean, you need help everywhere. Offensive line, tackle, guard. You got to protect your franchise quarterback and Trevor Lawrence. Okay, defense, you're still going to need some help in the secondary because that still is a big issue. You're probably going to need another pass rusher alongside the opposite side of Josh Allen because it looks like your former first round pick is a bust in K. LeVon Chasen. So you still need another pass rush. You need to improve the secondary. Like the whole entire team just still needs improvement. So the draft and free agency are going to be really big for Jacksonville. They should be pretty active in free agency since they do have so much cap space to to spend or they do have so much cash space that's available to them so they definitely should be improving those positions but what's going to happen with dj chart like are they going to be able to retain dj chart are they going to give dj chart the franchise tag are they going to try to come to a new deal with dj chart or are they just okay with letting dj chart walk away in free agency knowing that he's their best wide receiver on the team So if you let DJ Chart walk away, you're still going to have Marvin Jones. And then after that, things get really shaky from there. Now you do have LaVisco Chenault, who I like a lot. I think he could end up being one of the better slot receivers in the league. But you're going to have to make sure that Trevor Lawrence has time to get him the ball. So are there going to be a lot of great offensive linemen in free agency Not really. There's going to be like a couple of big names out there, but it's not really a great free agency class when it comes to depth on the offensive line. But the Jacksonville Jaguars definitely are going to have the money to get some of the better offensive linemen available and free agency. So when you look at Jacksonville, man, like this franchise, it's kind of hard to see this franchise having success moving forward. 
Now, you did hire Doug Peterson, but you got to wonder, is Doug Peterson going to be held back by Trent Blake? Like, is Trent Blake going to continue to be the incompetent general manager that he has showed to be so far during his tenure as a GM for Jacksonville? Like, this franchise is not in a good spot. And this is the most dysfunctional team in the league. And you look at Doug Peterson, like, Doug Peterson is basically being asked to save this franchise. Like, Doug Peterson has to not only stabilize this franchise, but he has to pretty much save Trevor Lawrence's career because Trevor Lawrence didn't look good last year. As a matter of fact, you probably could say that Trevor Lawrence was a even worse quarterback last year in his rookie season for the Jacksonville Jaguars than he was his whole entire time at Clemson. And it's crazy to say that, like, it's crazy that I'm actually saying that Trevor Lawrence was a better quarterback in college than he was in the NFL. Like, if you gave the Trevor Lawrence of Clemson in his last season to Jacksonville Jaguars with a competent coach, he probably would have won the rookie of the year. Like, this is a really big job for Doug Peterson. Okay, because like he has to not only stabilize and build a winning culture in Jacksonville, but you have to save the career of the number one overall pick from last year's draft and Trevor Lawrence. Then you have to figure out who you want to draft number one overall this year. So like, yeah, you do have a lot of cat space to work with. Yes, you are going to have a lot of capital in the draft, but are you going to be able to handle the dysfunctionality in the front office in Jacksonville? That's my question with Doug Peterson. So you guys let me know your state of the franchise for the Jacksonville Jaguars down in the comment section down below. If you're watching this on YouTube and make sure that you check out the JT Sports Podcast. Every video that's uploaded on the channel is available in audio format on every single podcasting platform. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast from, the JT Sports Podcast is available. The Indianapolis Colts finished this past season with a 9-8 record, which was good for second place in the AFC South Division behind the Tennessee Titans. And this team put their fan base through a roller coaster ride of emotions this past season. Remember, Indianapolis started out really slow. They were 1-4. And then they got really hot mid-October and they carried that momentum into November and pretty much the whole entire month of December. And during this stretch, they defeated teams like the 49ers, they blew out the Buffalo Bills, they defeated New England, Arizona, and many people, well some people out there, felt like the Indianapolis Colts could go on a run in the postseason similar to what the Cincinnati Bengals have went on, and they could be a potential Dark Horse Super Bowl contender. Well, unfortunately, that didn't happen because, one, Indianapolis didn't make the playoffs, and the reason for this was because they lost their final two games. They lost to the Las Vegas Raiders in a tightly contested contest, and then they were defeated by the worst team in the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars, some way, somehow. So Indianapolis missed out on their opportunity of the postseason And many Colts fans probably have a sour taste in their mouth. And when you look at the state of the franchise for Indianapolis moving forward, like you're going to have some money to spend and free agency. You have $37 million and some change in cap space. But you need to improve the wide receiver position. Now, T.Y. Hilton and Zach Pascal are expected to be unrestricted free agents. Now, at the moment, Indianapolis currently hasn't given any of those two guys new deals. So if they hit the free agency market, they're going to have to improve the wide receiver room, which even if they bring back T.Y. Hilton and Zach Pascal, they probably still should look to add some more talent via the draft or free agency to the wide receiver room because like Michael Pittman emerged as a true number one receiver for Indianapolis now they just need some complimentary pieces alongside him 
And I think the offense could be really good for the next couple of years. Like the wide receiver class is really loaded. So Indianapolis could draft the wide receiver in the third or fourth round. And he could be a really good number two. Or you could bring in some more guys in free agency. Or you could bring back either Zach Pascal or T.Y. Hilton. Now, I doubt that they would bring back T.Y. Simply for the fact that he has regressed over the last couple of years. He's getting up there in age. So if they were going to bring back a wide receiver, it most likely would be Zach Pascal. Which he was pretty productive at times for Indianapolis. Then you have to worry about the defense. Because you lost your defensive coordinator and Matt. Matt Eberflus, who took the Chicago Bears job, and you replaced him with Gus Bradley, which Gus Bradley was the defensive coordinator for Las Vegas, which the Raiders' defense was pretty solid. So you look at Indianapolis, they have a really talented defense, okay? You got Darius Leonard, you got DeForest Buckner, like Indianapolis has a really solid defense. However, you do have some question marks at corner with Xavier Rhodes being the unrestricted free agent, TJ Carey. You're going to have to add some more depth on the interior of the defensive line. So there's definitely some spots that need to be filled on the defensive end. But Overall, the Colts have a really good defense. And talent-wise, this is one of the most underrated teams in the league from a talent standpoint because this team led the lead in Pro Bowl selections with seven and I don't think enough people know that and even though a lot of people probably don't look at the Pro Bowl as a major accomplishment anything like that it still is supposed to celebrate some of the best players from this year and the fans opinions based off performance and for Indianapolis they had seven players who were Pro Bowl selections so that tells you just how talented of a roster this team has but What's going to happen with Carson Wentz? Because there is speculation when it comes to Carson Wentz's future in Indianapolis. Frank Wright hasn't really committed to him as his starting quarterback for next season. So we don't really know what's going to happen. Now, what I think will happen, and I'm going to repeat this again because I don't want any of you guys saying that I'm spreading false news or anything like that. So what I think will happen is that Carson Wentz will remain the starting quarterback in Indianapolis. However, I do think that there is a possibility that Indianapolis could draft a quarterback in the upcoming draft. And although this quarterback class isn't really that great, there's still some diamond in the roughs that you can get in round two or round three. So if Indianapolis is able to get their hands on Desmond Ritter, I think that could be a really good pickup because then you could groom him for a couple of years. And then depending on how Carson Wentz performs, if you want to get rid of Carson Wentz, he could be your next man up. Or if you want to keep Carson Wentz, he could be a very quality backup, which is something that you need when you have Carson Wentz as your starter, giving his injury history. But we don't really know what's going to happen with Carson Wentz but with the Colts having some cap space and some money to spend I definitely feel like they're going to look to upgrade at left tackle they're probably going to upgrade at wide receiver and I still like where the Colts are at like the Colts are right here they're in the middle okay like They're trying to take that next jump. If you're a Colts fan, you're looking for this franchise to end up being put in that Super Bowl window with teams like Buffalo, Kansas City, and whatnot. And you probably could add Cincinnati to the mix as well. So for Indianapolis, you're wondering when that jump is going to happen. When are you going to take that next step into being a legitimate Super Bowl contender? Because you do have a really solid head coach in Frank Reich. Now, I don't know where you will rank Frank Wright some people may consider him a top 10 coach some people probably would have him on the outside looking in probably around 12 or 13 the rank but he is a really solid head coach and when you look at how the season ended you know like it was pretty much you know it looked like they were unprepared because anytime you get upset by a team like Jacksonville You have to go into that game kind of unprepared because from a talent standpoint, Indianapolis should have beaten Jacksonville. And even if they struggled, they should have beaten Jacksonville by at least three points. But 
the fact that he lost that game kind of shows you at times they can be inconsistent and they can kind of have some slip ups. But I do think that Frank Wright is a really good coach. You look at how the front office is run, probably one of the best ran organizations in the league at the moment. So Colts fans, I know you're frustrated because you're wondering when you're going to have your moment. Because Cincinnati came out of nowhere when nobody expected it. And now they're in the Super Bowl. So you're wondering if Indianapolis is ever going to have that kind of season. And when is it going to happen? Could it happen next year? It most definitely could. Because you look at how talented this roster was this past season. I expect this roster to be just as good next season because of the cap space that they have available to them to address some of those positions of needs. And then I don't really think Carson Wentz was that bad. Like, yeah, he had his moments, but overall, I felt like he had a pretty solid season. And if you improve the wide receiver position, you give him a good wide receiver to pair alongside of Michael Pittman, you're going to have a really good passing attack. And you look at what Jonathan Taylor has done being in the MVP conversation like this is a really solid team and I think that this is a team to definitely look out for during the offseason because depending on how this offseason goes for Indianapolis it's kind of going to determine where they're going to rank in the Super Bowl hierarchy are they going to be a team that could be in the mix are they going to be a team that could be on the outside looking in on that conversation because that's kind of where this Colts franchise is like they're right here and they're trying to take that next jump into that conversation of being a legitimate championship contender they're just not there yet they're missing a couple of pieces so you're wondering what are the pieces that they're missing so you guys let me know how you guys feel about the state of the franchise for the Indianapolis Colts 